Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is August 24th, 2016. And here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a 6.2 magnitude earthquake strikes central Italy, 80 miles north of Rome. The mayor of one small town says half of the town doesn't exist anymore. And CNN seeks to cover Hillary's health concerns by questioning Trump's health. Strength and stamina are extraordinary. CNN's chief medical correspondent asked, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means he keeps up a pace Hillary can't even imagine. Then a cop kills a white unarmed deaf man over a speeding ticket as the deaf man tries to communicate in sign language. If sign language could kill, it would have been the cop instead of him. But we won't do anything to address this kind of government-inflicted violence because it doesn't serve the race war narrative of George Soros and his Black Lives Matter. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Last night, Donald Trump came here to the city of Austin, Texas, and later on in our show, we'll have our reporters coming in and talking about their experiences going out to these rallies. While you had so many pro-Trump people who were there, nice, friendly people, but you had the anti-Trump people who were some of the most vicious, incompetent, uh, just heinous people out there spitting on people, uh, trying to fight our reporters, elbowing them, all that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's talk about Donald Trump in a different way. Because there's been a lot of talk going on, and in my opinion, it's somewhat justified to talk about the health of Mrs. Clinton. Well, actually, not even somewhat justified to talk about the health of Mrs. Clinton. Because you have to consider that this person is going to be the leader of our nation, or at least the public face of the leader of our nation, for the next four years. And it's very reasonable to discuss their health, especially when you have somebody who publicly goes into coughing fits, has difficulty walking upstairs, uh, has to have stools to sit on, so on and so forth. I uh, doesn't want to have any press conferences for the simple fact that she doesn't want to be asked by the public, uh, by the press there about her health conditions, as well as many other things. I'm sure she doesn't want to talk about Billy Boy's rape scandals, as well as many other things. But while it's a rancid right wing conspiracy, there's that word which they can use against us. But if we use it, then you're just a crazy conspiracy theorist. But there is a right wing conspiracy against Hillary Clinton when you talk about her health. But according to CNN, it's good and fine to talk about the health of one Donald Trump. Now, once again, if you're in the public eye, especially for a high profile position like that, uh, your health is going to come into question. I understand that. But it's a conspiracy theory to talk about Clinton's health. But it's perfectly fine and rational to talk about the health of one Donald Trump. And CNN brought out uh, Sanjay Gupta. Uh, is that how you say the guy's name? I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Uh, but yeah, so this is the double standard that I've been talking about for weeks and I guess months now concerning Trump's campaign. You guys know how I feel about Trump, but I also play it straight down the middle. If you're going to do one thing about Trump, you have to do the same thing with Clinton. Just like uh, people want to say Trump's anti-woman, you know, he, uh, he called Megyn Kelly a bimbo or whatever it is that he said. Okay, let's take that at face value. Bill Clinton, Hillary's husband, who may be the first man at some point, uh, has been accused of raping multiple women over decades. And I'm not talking about consensual stuff. I'm talking about outright rape. So you can talk about Trump's calling somebody a bimbo, but if you want to talk about Billy Boy and his escapades, then you're just completely out of line and you don't want to see a woman in the White House. Now, another thing going on with Trump is his taxes, or lack thereof, uh, the public revelation of his taxes. Normally, by now, you, for your political contenders, you do have some type of uh, document that you can see of what they've been doing with their tax money. As far as what he's doing, I don't know. If I was a billionaire, I'd probably have several accountants, if not a outright accounting department. But now we see that Trump advisor Roger Stone, who's been on the show, he was here yesterday, as a matter of fact, says that Trump needs to release those records. It's time for it. And he said, yes, I think he should release his tax returns immediately. Stone said in an interview first reported by BuzzFeed. So even when you have guys like Roger Stone coming out, he's saying, hey, Let's just put this, let's nip it in the butt. You've had plenty of time to do whatever you got to do to get them prepared. Let's release the taxes so people know what to do with them. If there's going to be some shenanigans in there. I don't know. I'm not speculating that at all, but it's time to pretty much put your money where the mouth is and put that out there. Now, uh, someone who's been putting their foot in their mouth quite a lot is Mrs. Clinton, uh, because she says uh, these goofy things. She goes on talk shows, hey, I like to hang out with black people and eat hot sauce. But it's not just all of that. Now she's throwing guys like Colin Powell under the bus we're telling her to use a private email server. And let's take that at face value. Let's say this conversation actually took place. There are many people saying it didn't, but uh, for right now, let's just say this conversation did take place. As a Secretary of State in the United States of America, 
You're an adult. You have the common sense to know that if you do that, you're going to be putting national security at risk. So even if Colin Powell said, hey, why don't you go rob a bank? If, if the police pull me over, I got a stack of uh, you know, dollar bills you know, flying out my backpack. And they say, Mr. Jackson, why did you rob that bank? I'm like, well, Colin Powell told me it was okay. Well, hell, <laughs> Colin Powell told you it was okay. Let's take off these handcuffs and you can go on about your business. No, it's not the way it works. She knows better, but at this point, what difference does it make? And we have uh, the former Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice. She came out and she says she has no, recollect, no recollection that this conversation took place at a 2009 dinner party where Hillary Clinton reportedly claims that Colin Powell advised her to use a private email server. It's been reported by NBC News, New York Times, and that uh, Clinton told the FBI that Powell offered her the advice of using the private email server while they were at Secretary of State Madeleine Albright's home. And this is the issue with it. As I was saying before, you're in that position, you know better, just like the reports came out earlier this week about how Huma was using uh, her car to transport a secret documents, just left them in the front seat of an unlocked car. You, you don't see any problem with that. And these are the people that are supposedly or potentially going to be running our country in the next few months. Is this really what you want to happen? Yeah, I mean, you can throw plenty of mud at any of the candidates, uh, anybody across the board, even going back to uh, last year when you had a full deck of candidates. But when you have these egregious violations of privacy, violations of uh, responsibility, and not just with the emails, but with Benghazi or the lies, talking about she gets not shot up by sniper fire, and on and on and on. Of course, the shenanigans of Billy Boy and all that stuff. It's a real stacked deck of things that are just impossible to ignore. And I always use this example, like we're gonna show the videos coming up here in a little bit. The guys, they went on the street last night, they ran to a few Hillary supporters. They say, why do you like Hillary over Trump? And in my personal experiences, when I have these conversations with people, and I say, okay, tell me why you don't like somebody like Donald Trump. He's a racist, he's a sexist, he's a this, 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 and that. And I'm saying, okay, so he's a racist. Has Donald Trump ever went to a black radio station and said he likes to hang out with black people and eat hot sauce? Not that I'm aware of. Has Donald Trump ever been accused of raping multiple people? Now there's some like new story about uh, some child that supposedly said Donald Trump raped him. I, I mean, I don't know too much about that, but I do know that Billy Boy has been accused of been raping people for decades. So people will sweep uh, all the Clinton stuff under the rug. Meanwhile, they want to focus on every little nasty thing that Trump's ever been accused of. And once again, not justifying any of the negative things going on. I'm just saying the way it's being covered and being harped on in some ways, but uh, completely ignored in other ways. Now, one of the big issues here in the United States of America is that of quote unquote prepping, which is just being prepared for a situation that arises. You know, I have some, a lot of family live in kind of the backwoods out in the sticks, and they take it upon themselves to be prepared. Uh, now they just call it prepping and try to demonize you, but they understand that if you live way out in the sticks, if there's a flood, if there's snowfall, if uh, the, the roads are blocked by trees or some other falling debris, you may not be able to go to the grocery store and they don't live in suburbia where there's a grocery store in every corner. So they have to be prepared for the likelihood that something's going to happen. Now for, you know, BuzzFeed or whoever else writes their hit piece, I'm not some crazy prepper. I live in a one bedroom apartment. I don't have a fallout shelter. I'm saying I do have a little bit of food that I could survive on if the roads were closed for whatever reason. And this just is basic common sense. And now we see that people are wishing they had this type of mentality in other countries as we have reports of the Czech government telling its citizens to prepare for the worst. And after the German government told its citizens to stockpile food and water in case of a catastrophe, the Czech government is also now reportedly warning its population to prepare for the worst. On the other side of the border, Czech media is reporting that the country's food reserves are struggling, and it would be incapable of meeting demand in the event of a national crisis. Supplies of milk powder are particularly low. And if you guys recall, it wasn't that long ago we brought you the story about how in North Korea, they are literally telling people to eat grass. They said, eat plant roots. Meanwhile, Kim is, you know, dining on whatever he has. He's well fed, you can tell by the pictures. Uh, but he's telling his citizens to go out and eat grass. Likewise, in Venezuela, we've seen the food lines and all these other things that are going on, uh, the food crisis going on out there. So yeah, I don't think it's out of the ordinary to have a, a box of crackers and a bottle of water just in case something was to happen. But, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Now, going on on the other side of the planet, talk about some international news now in some other ways. Uh, we've seen a deadly terror attack at a university in Afghanistan, and this was an attack at American University. It says, uh, gunmen attacked American University of Afghanistan during classes on Wednesday evening. 
setting off an explosive, entrapping students and professors inside the building for several hours, while dozens fled to safety, eyewitnesses and officials said. At least one person was killed in the attack and 26 were injured, according to the Ministry of Public Health. Health, uh, no group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. And, and of course, I would say our thoughts and prayers go out to these people, but then the Democrats say, oh, you, you suck because you want to give thoughts and prayers to people. Well, I mean, what's wrong with wishing people well when they get attacked? But, you know, they get attacked if you say something like that on Twitter. But I'll go ahead and say I wish the best for the people out there, and I hope the people who were responsible are brought to justice. Like they said, it's not being pinned on any particular group, but if it does come out to be as part of a terror group, I hope they do catch those guys. But that's a very long-winded way of saying that these attacks happen all over the world. They just want to focus on the ones that happen here and want to blame it on X, Y, and Z. But regardless of what weapon you have, whether it's a bomb here or a truck in France or any number of other things, the bad guy is going to use whatever tool they have available to them at that time to commit that crime. Now, uh, there's been an earthquake in Italy. It's rocked Italy, and uh, at this point, the body count is 120 dead. Of course, in situations like this, uh, there's a lot of people covered by rubble, so they know what the exact toll is at this time. But they say the death toll is still rising as responders use bulldozers and manpower to rescue residents from rubble after a 6.3 magnitude earthquake that rocked Italy. And of course, a very sad situation there. And to bring it back here to the States now, there's a lot of talk as to the issue with police shootings. I don't think anybody argues that this is a problem, but the uh, thing that keeps getting kicked around like the football is that why are these things happening? And it's the chicken of the egg scenario. It was the bad people in the streets, or it was the cops, or it was the cops that made the bad people in the streets. And at this point, it's kind of like the Hillary Clinton thing. What difference does it make? We have to move forward at some point and try to figure out a way past this. And uh, there's a lot of people who want to pin it all on race. And of course, race is an issue for any number of things. You have driving while black or other types of racial profiling. And I'm definitely not trying to downplay those. But we have a situation here where a black officer shot a man for simply being deaf. And the situation was that a state trooper pulled a guy over for, uh, I believe, some type of just minor traffic speeding violation. The guy's 29 years old. He was just feet from his home in Charlotte. And witnesses say the trooper shot him almost immediately after he exited the car. And the police report identified Harris as hearing and speech impaired. So basically, this guy gets out of the car in an attempt to communicate with the officer. He knows that he can't speak or he has a speech impediment, whatever else. And for whatever reason, the thing got escalated and the guy ends up getting shot dead by the police officer. And we've seen this happen in other areas. It happened actually here in the city of Austin, Texas. I don't believe the guy died or was seriously injured in the incident, but basically he got pulled over a similar situation, a minor traffic infraction. He gets out, he has his wallet in the hand, and the police officer opens fire and starts shooting at the guy. And these are the type of things that we see repeated over and over and over, regardless of the race of the suspect or the race of the officer or you know any number of other factors. I think at the baseline of it, this is the issue with the way these guys are being trained. They're coming out of the academy and being shown these uh, these videos, like you, the, the suspect's gonna kill you and your whole family. Are there people like that? Yeah, is that the type of situation that you're going to encounter on a routine basis? No, you have to be, you have to have a level of discretion, just like if you go through a concealed carry class, you can't just whip out your gun and start waving it around in any type of situation. You have to really think, is my life in jeopardy in this situation? And when you get some guy who gets out the car and he's just waving his hands around, trying to speak, I guess use sign language or whatever else, He's not a direct threat to you. He's not carrying a knife. He's not carrying a gun. He's not carrying a baseball bat. Why did you have to open fire on this guy or at least open fire with uh, by using lethal force? If the guy, if the officer really felt in danger, could use pepper spray or a taser or something else in this situation, that still would have been overkill. But at least they wouldn't have killed the guy in doing so. And it's a very sad story. And it's the type of thing that we have to get to the bottom of to where the officers need to know that not everybody is their enemy, but also the people on the street, because we do see the groups going out there, agitating people, fighting with the cops, uh, purposely trying to stir the cops up. So it's on both sides. It's not just all the cops. It's also uh, certain agitators out there, especially in the wake of uh, some recent things, uh, like the officers getting shot at the pumps, and that's by no means a justification uh, for what happened here. But this long-winded way of saying that it's all the way around, these things need to be changed. Now, if you guys recall, I guess it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, in New York where they brought about the New York soda ban and they wanted to ban cigarettes and all types of uh, silly things. 
Now they're coming out with new guidelines for sugar for kids. Now, as far as a guideline, I don't have an issue with a guideline or a suggestion. We suggest you do X. That's fine. It's when, when they try to cross it over and make it some type of official policy or law that I have an issue with it. The article says children in the United States currently consume an average of 19 teaspoons of sugar a day, but the American Heart Association wants families to focus on taming that sweet tooth. Last year, the World Health Organization recommended that adults and children limit their added sugar intake to 10% of their daily calories. Now, personally, I consume much more than 10 <laughs> teaspoons of sugar a day or 19 teaspoons of sugar a day. I mean, I, I go to the gym, do other stuff, try to burn it off, but um, this really doesn't fly with me personally. I have uh, quite a large sweet tooth, but as I was saying, a guideline, a suggestion, we would suggest you do this, that's fine, but when they cross over to the New York thing, they're trying to ban salt or whatever else they're trying to ban up there, the big sodas. That's when you're taking it a bridge too far, especially when you have like these school lunch programs that uh, Michelle is pushing, where the kids are saying we're hungry. He's, they're saying that this one size fits all uh, curriculum, this food curriculum that you have doesn't work for everybody. You, you, you're giving the football players the same uh, amount of food that you give them to chess players. Chess players may be smart, but they're not burning off the same amount of calories as the football team is. So you have to have some type of uh, way to gauge that. And finally, uh, a lot of people talk about Social Security, and they say it's not going to be around for guys like me. That very much is a possibility. But even for people right now, they're not getting everything that they're owed. And this is a homeless woman. She says uh, she's 80 years old. She's been living on the street, and she finally persuaded the government to pay her more than $100,000 that they owed her. But it's taken her this long, and now she's going to receive her payment and try to move on with her life. Just another problem with Social Security and just uh, ensuring everything to the government. But stay tuned after this break for more special reports right here on the InfoWars Nightly News. Racist go home. Racist go home. And the name calling blares on with nothing to back it up. Well, Trump haters, have you put much research or even logical thought into your claims of Donald Trump's supposed xenophobia? I know it's a big word and it's fun to use, but why is it that Trump made this statement in the first place? When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. It's coming from more than Mexico. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably probably from the Middle East. Could this have something to do with it? Last year, the Washington Times reported that more than 100 immigrants whom the Obama administration released back into the community went on to be charged with subsequent killings. And in 2015 alone, over 30,000 illegals from countries of terrorist concern crossed the United States' southwestern border. That was last year, clowns. Do you actually think denying those facts as they get buried by the dying lamestream media solve the problem you're gonna take this and probably spin it right as many as 20 Americans are killed by unlicensed drivers per day the bulk of which are drivers in the United States illegally most of these manslaughter cases barely see any jail time because of their illegal immigration status as I started to testify Sacramento Los Angeles uh, Police Commission all I was hearing was well, you know, these people work, they contribute, they have to take their kids to school. Like that was a reason that it was okay that they killed people. And every year, just driving, they kill about 3,000 people, which of course never makes it in the press anywhere. Uh, most newspapers now don't even uh, give the license or immigration status when they kill somebody. All Mexicans rapists. Wrong. No, he has. Wrong. Someone have a someone have someone pull it up. I don't know. How dare Donald Trump refer to illegal aliens as rapists, right? Wrong. Just last month, the website ncfire.info 
short for North Carolinians for Immigration Reform and Enforcement, a website that simply tallies North Carolina child rape crimes, reported that in July of 2016, last month, 117 innocent North Carolina children were sexually abused by these guys, the same guys the anti-Trumpers claim don't exist. In December of 2013, 89 illegals committed 575 acts of sexual abuse on American children in one month alone. If North Carolina serves as the bellwether, can you imagine what's happening in states like California and Texas? And now, as the Washington Free Beacon reported, Sunni extremists are infiltrating the United States with the help of alien smugglers in South America and are crossing U.S. borders with ease. According to a U.S. South Command intelligence report, the command's J-2 intelligence directorate reported recently in internal channels that special interest aliens are working with a known alien smuggler network in Latin America to reach the United States. If you superimpose these facts on the anti-Trump protesters' concerns, at the end of the day, it's nothing less than a display of treason. Treason fueled by disinformation, insulting the memory of defenseless Americans killed and or raped by the very illegal aliens these delusional leftists continue to defend. But all of that horror aside, anti-Trump protesters, you just keep on ignoring the mushrooming epidemic of unreported child rapes by illegals, the unwarranted deaths of your fellow citizens, and the coming jihad that will eventually claim you or someone you know if the real Americans protecting your hide don't do something about it. Because the rest of us are working towards a day when you will have to answer to your ignorance. I'm a senior citizen, and I don't believe in dirty, filthy, lying politics. Okay, so who are you going to vote for? Can I ask you who you're going to vote for? You can count on it. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Hold on, folks. She just said she's against lying, corrupt politicians, but she's voting for Hillary Clinton. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, this is going to be a follow-up report on something that I covered earlier this week on Monday. Now, Monday, I was actually sent a tweet, a picture of something that kind of really caught my eye. It was from a soldier inside of an OPSEC briefing uh, at a military compound. Now, in this picture, it lists Hillary Clinton and David Petraeus as examples of insider security threats. Now, we both know that these two individuals have been involved in scandals regarding the mishandling of classified information. It says in an article up by the Daily Caller, a leaked Army operational security brief appears to show Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton and CIA director David Petraeus listed as two key examples of potential insider threats. The brief marked unclassified list service members Nadal Hassan, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, and Aaron Alexis as examples of threats. During her time at the Department of State, Clinton conducted official government business via a private email address on a private email server. Now, none of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system, but their presence is especially concerning because of all these emails were housed on unclassified personal servers, not even supported by full-time security staff. Now, I was in the Army for 10 years. I had a security clearance. And in that time, when you go to these OPSEC briefs, which is operational security, you are told not to bring your cell phone into these classified areas, into these secure locations, which house classified material, because they don't want any of that getting out. They don't want you taking pictures. They don't want you to have any kind of recording devices that might uh, capture a conversation because of the information and the importance of that information and national security. And we've seen how careless Hillary Clinton is with it how Director Comey of the FBI came out and laid out every reason why she broke the law, and yet nothing's being done. Meanwhile, David Petraeus had a few binders of unclass or classified information uh, stored in a unsecured storage bin, and he had to plead to misdemeanor charges. Meanwhile, she's deleted over just tons of emails, 30,000 emails have been recovered, 19,000 which were deleted, and they are trying to recover now that are gonna have damning information on that. But if I would have done something like this, if any other soldier in the military would have leaked this kind of information, 
They would go to Fort Leavenworth. They would have been court-martialed. They would have received UCMJ action. So I put out this report, and it was retitled Army Slide, you know, found showing how Hillary Clinton is being used as this prime example. And a lot of people mocked us and said, oh, that's a fake slide. That's not real. Well, guess what? Here it is two days later, and the Army Times has now come out with an article. It says, Army pulls training slide, listing Clinton Petraeus as the examples of insider security threats. It says a PowerPoint training slide listing former Secretary of State and Jennifer Petraeus, among others, uh, was in use for 18 months at Fort, Levin, or Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, before Army officials pulled it out of circulation. The image includes photos of Clinton and Petraeus, along with Major Nadal Hassan, who was the guy behind the Fort Hood shooting. The slide came to the attention of the Army late Monday afternoon same time that I put out a video exposing this. Now, I've got a few buddies who are still in the military, and they send me pictures all the time and updates and documents and briefings of what they're hearing, and a lot of people thought that this was BS. Now, here we have the Army coming out and telling us that this is, in fact, a real slide that was being used for 18 months, and now they're going to pull Hillary Clinton's picture off of it. We know she broke the law. We know that she mishandled classified information. But I would go to jail. Other soldiers would go to jail. Other people within the government would be in jail right now. But this woman can get away with everything. And you expect her to run our country? You expect her to be the leader of the free world? When she can't even handle classified information, the same kind of information that if exposed can cause a huge security threat for America. I hope everybody watching this right now is completely and totally pissed off because I am. The fact that this woman could be running right now for president and be in the lead in the polls, it's completely and totally out of control. America, wake up and stay tuned for more reports as we expose the corruption that is Hillary Clinton. The fact that she is the epitome of evil. This has been Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Stay tuned for more reports. I'm Margaret Halb reporting for InfoWars.com. Would it shock you to know that Baltimore has been surveilling their citizens from the air? They've been doing it for the past year. Police are secretly using a surge company for aerial surveillance. Now, these secret cameras in the sky, they're recording and storing Baltimore's every move. They've been doing it for the past year. PD, they've secretly been conducting this aerial surveillance. It's of a 30-square-foot mile of the city. The technology, they say they're using it uh, to, to warn against crimes pending that Freddie, Freddie Gray case that happened last year. That's when they started using it. It's the same technology that they were using, the, the U.S. military was, during the surge in the Iraq war. It's made from a company in Ohio called Ohio Persistent Surveillance Systems, and it uses a small plane with a high-res camera to track crimes. Now, get this. It saves the footage on hard drives for months, and the city of Baltimore, they've never publicly disclose the program exists. It's funded by a private donor, a private entrepreneur. His name is John Arnold. And uh, he decided that he was going to fund this pilot program with little knowledge or consent of any of the citizens actually being surveilled. One ACLU policy analyst, he had this to say about the privacy breach. He said, I ha I'd said to myself, this is where the rubber hits the road. The technology has finally arrived and Big Brother which was everywhere, has always talked about this. Well, guess what? It's finally here. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Now, this system, they've been using it since the beginning of the year. They said that they wanted to track the unrest during the trials regarding the Freddie Gray murder. Uh, but they're still using it long after that's done uh, with little uh, explanation as to their actions. They're, they're surveilling people aerially, and they've been doing it for some time now. Now, moving on to something else that's also pretty shocking in the headlines today. Everyone's aware that President Obama gave that $400 million to Iran, uh, which he said wasn't a hostage payment. Uh, that's still up in the air. But would it shock you to know that the State Department, they finalized this agreement, and they've given the state of Iran 13 separate payments uh, to finalize that $1.3 billion that they agreed to give them. A State Department spokeswoman, she confirmed, she said that $99,999,999.99, million, cents, 10 separate payments totaling to $1.3 billion was given to Iran. Now, the diplomatic sensitivities that she had mentioned 
Uh, she spoke of the January 19th payment, which was pretty controversial. The president didn't even acknowledge that it happened. He said, no, it wasn't a ransom for the release of four hostages held by the state of Iran. He said that simply that 1979 revolution, the State Department announced that they were going to pay this because of a military dispute contract. Uh, regarding the Shah and uh, that time. Now, the State Department spokesperson, she referenced this military equipment deal that was never reached because of that 1979 revolution that happened in Iran. The State Department, they announced that the cash payments were contingent upon the release of those four being detained in Iran, even though the president said that there was no ransom paid for their release. Yeah, right. 1.3 billion, and they're saying that it's because of interest owed to Iran, uh, the same Iran that chanced death to America. We had to give them an interest payment uh, in January to resolve this decades-old dispute uh, regarding an undeliverable military sale. Now, I want to point out that President Obama, the first president in history to acknowledge this deal, oh, and also pay a massive sum of interest to a country that despises us, despite every predecessor before him, after that 1979 military equipment deal gone wrong, not doing this. He just decided to go ahead and honor that and uh, give them backdated interest payments. Now, this money comes out of our Treasury Department, and uh, specifically there's money that uh, Congress has approved in the event that it's needed, I guess like cases like this, allowing the president to be able to bypass, and directly quoting here, bypass direct congressional approval to make a settlement. So we're talking about money. He doesn't have to get the approval of Congress to use. It's a little slush fund hidden away in the Treasury Department for settling litigation claims specifically like this one. Although no court decided that America owed money to Iran, simply our president did, and he's paid it in full. That's the announcement today coming ahead of schedule. I'm Margaret Howell reporting for Infowars.com. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're standing outside of the Trump rally in Austin, Texas, and they're holding up a sign that says Trump go home. Uh, why are you saying Trump go home? He's an American. Uh, yeah, this is America, but we don't want it uh, here in Austin, Texas. We're trying to get it home up here. Uh, all the people that want to get in, but they're closing it down, that's what really matters. Do you guys even have documentation to vote? No, we do not. Well, then they shouldn't vote, because I came here legally, and I had to wait to vote, and you guys come over here, and you think you can control the media? Why are you laughing? Do you even know what I'm saying? Well, actually, I'm pro-Trump, and I was sitting there to question them why they're having the sign. So well, you don't I, even I, know why I'm here. Enjoy so. the camera. Enjoy the camera. I do. Yeah. Yes. Hi there. Hi there. You are saying do it legally. Yes. How about that? No, we do. If you even knew who InfoWars was, you'd know I that. Actually do. Then Thank you would you. know that we do then. No, sorry. So anyways, so. It's your, it's your spin again. Okay, everyone has a spin, just like you. <laughs> Stop the hate. <laughs> Now, she's a hateful person. You can tell her to go home, all right? She's kind of rude. So what do you think? So are you here legally? Yeah. So why are you telling him to go home, then, if he's from America? One moment. Get in. Austin, Texas. Well, it seems like there's thousands of people in Austin, Texas who do, though. Yeah, I know. I know. But that's me. It's my right to... to oh, no, to I know that. that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to know yours. So what, what do you not like about him? Yeah, because he's very racist. Why is he racist? Because he's had a company for years. No one's ever called him a racist until he ran for president. Now, I could tell you a million things about Hillary Clinton and what's wrong with her. But all you can tell me is racist, sexist, Islamophobic, this and that. That's the same kind of argument you have in a, in a playground when you're a kid and you lose an argument. Then you call someone a dumbass or something like that. So that's, that's a horrible, like, give me a real reason why Trump is racist. Tell me how. Because he wants to keep illegals out and the fact that there are criminals coming from Mexico over. That is, that's the truth. That's not true, sir. Oh, so it's not true. So no, no criminals have ever come over from Mexico illegally. You're gonna let me talk, or you're just gonna talk? Because I'm gonna talk too. Talk, well, just talk. talk. Yeah, that's your show. Well, then talk. Now. That's your show. You have. Yeah, it is. Question. Now you talk. You answer yourself. You do things by yourself. You can do it. No, you can do it. Go. Tell me oh, why. Let me tell you why. Because he's a liar. He's a social liar. This is the first thing. Because he regret now. He said he's not gonna deport 11 million people now. It's too late because the community is already tired about him. Because it's too late when he said, I'm not going to deport it. I'm going to choose from 11 million people. I'm going to choose the best people. You know what? He's going to have a very surprising when he find out all 11 million people, they hit, they working hard, they pay taxes, and they can they great good. If they're illegal, then they're not. What is your question? 
What do you want to? Well, you're saying Trump go him? home. Yeah. What do you okay, want but he's an American, so he shouldn't leave. Do you want to deport legal citizens? What do you want here for me? What do you want here for me? I want to hear what you why, why you're out here. Oh, okay. I telling you. Yeah, but you, you're you saying let me speak. You, you just stop speaking, so that's the end of the conversation. So that leaves gap. So if you're here illegally, then you should not be here. Why not? Because you have to go through the system the right way. You know how many of my buddies who went to Afghanistan with me, Iraq, and went through and got their citizenships the right way and fought for this country? And they're going to sit here and hold a sign illegally and tell people to go home negative. That's the wrong attitude. I know, but this is already late because we already... No, it's, not, it, it, it's late. We it already here. Guess what? If I sneak into a movie illegally, I get kicked out. If I sneak into a sporting event illegally and don't buy a ticket, I get kicked out. That's how it's done. Really? You think it's work like that? You think yes. it's like that? If you're illegal, then you have to go back and go through it the proper way and do it the right way like other people are doing to wait in line to get here. You know how many people, I, how about this? How do, you, how do you go back? How many people do you know, you know how many people I know right now who come here on a work visa, they work here, then they leave and come back and get there the right way? Uh, sorry, I think you're very wrong. You, you're talking to the wrong person. You need to talk for people who attack illegal, illegal people because I defend There's them. illegal people outside right now, like 100 people outside of this fence who are cussing at people and telling them to get the hell out of their hood. Why you want to talk to me? Because I want to ask you why you're here then. I'm already told you. you okay, well, I, 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 I listen. You understand? Yeah, but I'm still having more of a conversation. I still want to be here. Oh, okay, ask me. Ask me questions. All right, so what do, you think, what do you think about securing the border? Do you want a wall? No, I do not want a wall. Why not? Because we don't need it. Yeah, we do. No, because all the people, all the terrorists come here legal. Let me tell you that. You know that, right? 911, that's illegal people. It's legal people. Everybody who's terrorist in here in the United States, it's legal. Bad news for you. What about okay. all the ones we don't know about, though? Yeah. <laughs> illegals, 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 that we, we are not terrorists at all. Who said you're a terrorist? But you're here illegally, though. Yeah. Okay, how about this? You ever heard of Andrew Tamorsi who went to Mexico illegally? Guess what happened? He went to prison. And he was a guy who fought for America. He went to jail. If I go to Mexico right now illegally without citizenship and I don't have a passport, I will go to jail. Good. Okay, okay. And then if you're illegal here, you should go to jail or be deported. Okay, I'm waiting for somebody to put me in jail now. Well, Donald Trump's going to do it. Stay tuned for more reports at Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. Intro some Trump protesters. What's your name, ma'am? Hi, my name is Georgia Schmitz. And what are you out here protesting? I'm protesting Donald Trump. And what is it about Donald Trump that motivated you to come out here and protest? Well, I think he's a dick and his running mate, Mike Pence, is a dick as well. He's a racist. I'm protesting because I think Donald Trump is a racist. Uh, I think he would be the worst president in the history of our country. I painted my face because I think that Trump is a joke. Because he is racist, misogynistic, he hates immigrants, and yet he has an immigrant as a wife. As I just said to her, let's look for something beyond an ad hominem attack. Let's talk about policy. Okay, he doesn't really have any, have any policy. Well, that's completely false, actually. Now, hold on. See, this is an amazing argument. I see people saying that Donald Trump has no policy. Donald Trump has given more detailed policy plans than any other candidate. Tax reform, health care, school. He's done it all. Immigration. No other candidate has had a detailed a detailed plan like this, but a joke. I, they continue to go to ad hominem attacks. So what else is wrong with Trump? I think Gigi Allen should be the president of the United States. I think we should all die. This is a protest. Hey, do you have anything to say? than immigration as a human right and that we should get rid of all borders. Now we've got some, uh, it looks like some communists gathered behind me. We're going to see what they're here doing. You guys are against Trump. You mind uh, telling us why? Uh, this guy doesn't, why can't you talk to him? Uh, you don't like his right to free speech? Trump. Uh, <laughs> that's why they don't want to talk to us because that's all they can say. See, see? Every single one of them, every single one of them has used that. Why are you trying to fight me, bro? Hey, hey, what are you saying? What are you guys chanting? What does that mean? Anti capitalist. You're anti capitalism. So why don't you go to a communist country? You have Nike. Oh, we're trying to make this one a communist country. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, do you know about Venezuela? 
Never heard of it. Never heard of Venezuela. Venezuela is a communist country that is collapsing. They're eating their pets. They're so hungry. What do you think about that? You fucking idiot. You look up <laughs> communism and punch you in the face. What do you think about Venezuela? Like it did Alex Jones last year. What do you think about Venezuela? Alex Jones, what happened last year? What do you... Back to Austin, will take you in the face hey, again. Hey, let me ask you a question. What do you think about Venezuela? I think you're a... Boy, and you don't know what communist means. Out of Austin, Alex Jones! Out of Austin, Alex Jones! Out of Austin! We've got, uh, they want Alex Jones out of Austin. They want InfoWars out of Austin. These people hate free speech. They're obviously communists. So I don't know why they just don't go to Venezuela, a communist haven. Hey, you guys know North Korea is communist too. Why don't you go to North Korea? You! Can you put your sign down? You're out here for, I don't understand people that, I'm, I'm not in your face, calm down. I just don't understand people that come out here and protest, and then, oh, look at that. Now you're a joke too. I just became an official Hillary Clinton supporter. Senior citizens, look at Donald Trump, is a filthy, lying. I don't think you speak for all Man. senior citizens. Are you out of your mind? My grandparents mind? support Donald well, Trump. I don't give a about your grandparents. That's clearly. What I know about are the people that I know. I'm a senior citizen, and I don't believe in dirty, filthy, lying politics. Okay, so who are you going to vote for? Can I ask you who you're going to vote for? You can count on it. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Hold on, folks. She just said she's against lying, corrupt politicians, but she's voting for Hillary Clinton. You would think if you're out here protesting, there is something driving you to do that. There's a motivational factor. And then when I give them a platform to talk about their issues, they completely ignore me. I get blown. I'm a, this is a clown. This guy, yeah, I do, actually. Okay, cool. Do you have a clown degree? Did you go to clown school? I do. Wait, hey, it's official. So are you clowns against Trump? Yeah, yeah, we are. We hate free speech, so we're out here protesting. Well, you don't want Alex Jones' right to free speech. I don't even know who the f*** Alex Jones You were just chanting Alex Jones out of Austin. Yeah, I know what I was saying. I'm not stupid. So you say things you know nothing about? Yeah. But so like communism? Well, I'm Russian. I know plenty about that. So you should know why communism is bad? Yeah, I do know why communism is bad. So why are you out here protesting capitalism? Why are you out here interrogating me? The reason why we come out here and do these videos is because these people embarrass themselves. People go watch these videos, and then they see how stupid the anti-Trump movement is. That's the truth. That's why we do these videos you think i want to be out here in the 95 degree heat sweating like this no but we come out here and we destroy the anti-trump movement because these people are the most ignorant people i've ever met in my life questions and owen schroyer for infowars.com stupid questions intelligent answers donald trump is a tramp we are still uh, probably at least a quarter of a mile away from the trump rally and traffic is backing up it's a near standstill people have Sorry to get out of their cars and walk. I am inviting anyone here. The microphone. Come tell me why you hate Trump. Shut the up. Because I have a vagina. Because Trump ain't for the people. He's racist, nigga. Because he's a piece of shit. What's your point, ma'am? What's your point, ma'am? What's your point, ma'am? What's your point, cowbell? Can I ask who you support for president in the upcoming election? Hillary Clinton. You don't think Hillary Clinton lies? Well, you know what? She has more experience than Trump does. And what experience is that? This is what a is this? Trump uh, TV station. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, well, then really go. So what? So you're bigoted against me? I'm not bigoted. Well, then why'd you come say that to cut her off? Because you're a pro-Trumper. Okay, you're probably a pro-Hillarier. You're a pro-Trumper. You're really educated. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, so there we go. Thank you for your time, though. Woo! Great response, great response. So, look at this guy. Somebody stuck a knife in this guy's tire at the Trump rally. Right outside Trump rally. You want to say something? Well, we've seen uh, cases of Trump supporters getting their tires slashed, getting beat up and everything. And that's, that's all we can assume that happened right here. I don't know why else a pocket knife would be sticking out of a tire, so... Unfortunately uh, for this person, he was victimized by the peaceful Trump protesters this evening. And we're joined by one of the stars of those videos you saw right there, Owen Schroyer. Now, Owen, as I'm watching those videos, the full videos, are, of course, are on the site. There's a short compilation. But the full video, one of the most notable things to me was when you went out there, I believe you were close to the downtown area, and you ran into the group of communists. 
had their faces covered. You know, it's 100 plus degrees outside. These guys are wrapped up head to toe in it. And it was very funny to me because those are the same guys we met at uh, the abortion clinic, the Planned Parenthood clinic. And they said, we kill our kids and all this and that, even though we could tell who they were, even though they had the disguises on. But I was there that day when they allegedly punched Alex in the face. And I can say that nobody punched Alex in the face. I was there the whole time. What had happened was I, the closest thing that I could think the guy was referencing was when somebody tried to snatch the microphone from Alex. So he did snatch the microphone from Alex. And then the guy, he tried to run away, but his jeans were too tight. And then he ended up crawling over. Tried, all this is on video. I know it sounds sensational. It's funny. But that's what really happened that day. And this is what you run into when you run into uh, when you go out to these events and you see these communists, these uh, people who just really have no idea of what's going on. So what was your experience being out there in the field? Well, and you mentioned the fact that they've been out there before. So that makes me think that these guys are some form of a paid protester. I mean, they're, they're going out to counter uh, where they know InfoWars will be. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think that there's someone giving them a directive to come out there. And like you said, now they want to hide their face. And I think that what that illustrates to me is that they don't want their faces to be shown. I don't understand protesters that go out on the streets and raise their voice to try to create awareness for a cause, mm -hmm. and then you provide for them a platform and they cower away from you. Or as you said, they rip the mic away or they shove you away. Um, but the communists specifically in the video you saw, I mean, I tried to engage in a debate mm -hmm. and what did they do? They elbowed me and F, I think, you, F I think that's, Trump. Yeah, I think that's all they said was F you, F me, F this. Um, but we've illustrated that multiple times. Mm -hmm. You've been exposed to these people multiple times. I think the two big things I took away yesterday was, and this is regardless of how you feel about Donald Trump, yeah. the protesters protesting against Trump have very little depth to their points. They've done very little research or none at all. And they're pretty much just part of the hearsay mafia. And then two, how is Hillary Clinton winning in any of these polls when Donald Trump gets 12,000 people at rallies, he rejects people at the doors and there's cars lined up for miles. I don't see how Hillary Clinton is winning in the polls when she doesn't even have a fraction of that type of support. So those were the two big things I think I took away from yesterday, Jakari. Yeah, it is quite the sight, and I agree with everything you said right there. I mean, we see the guy, whether you love him or hate him, he draws big crowds. When he went to Milwaukee, he draws crowds. When he goes to other places, he draws a crowd. So I can't believe if people actually think that Clinton is winning by a landslide in some people's minds. Thank you so much, Owen, and thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back right here tomorrow night for the InfoWars Nightly News, Jakari Jackson and Owen Schroyer.